Hello and welcome to live radio match commentary of Dartford versus Chippenham Town live from Princess Park. The date is Thursday the 12th of May 2022 for this 7.45 kickoff. And well, it's the biggest game in Chippenham Town's long illustrious history, I think. I am joined with head of media Matt Chapel, and most importantly in my opinion, special guest Kian Ward with my commentary here today. So boys, I'm gonna ask, going to go with you Matt first. You've been at this club well over most of your life really at this point. First time in the Step 2 playoffs. What does it mean to you? So much tonight. It's, you know, it's, it's a big game, big occasion for the club. Obviously tonight, it's, obviously we, we, we're, we're, we're busy in this game, you know, busy the, the underdogs in this game. So hopefully tonight we can get a big, big opportunity to get to advance to the semi-finals. We'll just see what happens first. You're going to have the probably biased opinions of me and Matt today from the Chippenham <laughs> point of view. <laughs> but you're going to have the neutral opinions of, uh, I'd, I'd consider friend, Kean Ward. Is that what we are? Kean, you're coming in as a neutral. How are you looking forward to this game? Oh, it's, it's a massive game. You know, don't get me wrong, you know. Chippenham, I think, you know, like me, I'm obviously at Concord. We're, I, I say, a similar size. Chippenham are probably bigger than us. But, you know, Chippenham are potentially three wins away from playing, you know, Notts County away. Wrexham if they don't go up. Place like Grimsby, you know, Scumford just come down. Oldham Athletic, to name some of these clubs. You know, it's probably the most competitive and the best of national leagues being in. But you know what? I fancy Chippenham's chances tonight. I really do. I was here in November, obviously, Jamie, with you, when it was, was it free all, wasn't it, that afternoon? And I'm, yeah, genuinely looking forward to this. It's going to be a great game, sun shining. I've only had to travel 10 minutes to get here. It's wonderful. <laughs> I've, spoke, I've spoken to a number of fans and people in the week that I know in and around the club and they've been quietly confident, some of them vocally confident as I've had to keep them calm. I've said football's not played on paper, of course. It's played on a lovely a lovely stadium here today. Not not the perfect set of grass that I've ever seen in a football pitch, as I say, as the groundsman are just next to me, so I do apologise. But uh, the pitch is currently being watered, just like we saw at Haven't, so there's some nice treatment towards the pitch. And I mean, I had to keep some Chippenham fans weathered just to say football's not played on paper because... Obviously, when me and Kian were here in November and Matt was off on filming duty that day, we drew three all. Chippenham led by a goal to nil before falling behind and then pulling it back with a 92nd minute Luke Ross equaliser as I stare down towards the goal where it happened all, all those nearly five, six months ago now. But the game also in March was a 4 2 win for the Bluebirds, as you might be able to hear the atmosphere just begins to build here at Princess Park. But everyone, you might not believe, while well, the Dartford fans on the right hand side of me are starting a drum, and I, I think the most atmosphere here is that uh, Keen is clapping along with them. So no, I was, no, no, don't put me in that light. That was not right. Don't come over to false facts. I was saying hi to Steve Irving, the chairman here at Dartford. But yeah, don't, don't start making up lies about me, Jamie, for entertainment. <laughs> I will quickly run through today's team, starting with the host. All the way through to Henry in his goal. And the first touch for any goalkeeper today is going to be towards Will Henry. Wearing his fluorescent green kit today, chipping him in their usual blue, which is odd to see this season. I think it's the first time they've played in blue away from home. And Dartford, of course, in their white shirts, black socks, black uh, shorts, white socks. I do apologise. Getting my colours mixed up as I see Kean chuckles out towards me as Tom Bonner picks the ball up in his own half. He's going to launch the ball forward, but Hanks just about gets ahead of him. And Chippenham have the ball in an advanced opportunity now. And Jordan Young's going to have there in the byline, but Duradaje's over there with him. And the ball's flicked in there by Santos. And only a minute into this match, Chippenham are going to have their first corner. Thank you very much. The 110 of you, wow, only six more and we'll have beaten our first record. So if many of you very know of any uh, listeners who can't listen to the match, send them in this chat. We're going to try and break our record this evening. And so far, just less than two minutes into this match, Jordan Young's going to take a Chippenham Town corner. What a start. This will be for the Bluebirds if you can find the back of the net. Two arms go up for the Chippenham number nine. The ball is going to be delivered in towards that box. It's headed there by Joe Hanks. And that was straight there at Reese Charles Cook. Well, that's a big chance, really, for Chippenham. There's a referee whistle has been blown as Tom Bonner's gone down. Oh, sorry, Jack Jeb's gone down after a collision. But Joe Hanks had a lot of time and a lot of space to think about where to head it. But I think maybe the nerves of this match just got to him and he headed straight at the former Arsenal youth goalkeeper. Keen, what do you make of that chance? Well, it's a pretty simple save really for cooking goal. A good solid header, a bit of sustained pressure there from Chippenham. Well, I'm just coming over three minutes in. And fair play, you know, I think you've really got to go for Darth this evening. Don't sit back. I know I said yesterday in one of our group chats that probably the best way is to sit back and absorb pressure and try and grab him on the counter. Oh, the ball's just got missed there. And Mo Dabry might just about pick that up. Tom Mayhew can't quite get there ahead of a Darth player. And they're going to come forward now with Duradaja, I think. Can't particularly see as Steve King and his assistant team just get in the way of me. I think it might be Junaid Mead who's picked the ball up and send it long, looking forwards Parcel, and it's missed there by the Dartford right winger, and Dabrick also can't quite get there, so it's going to be another throw-in. It's knocked down again by Kalala, 
And Kalala's just played, picked the ball up. It's a firm challenge. The first crunching challenge we've seen this match. Picked up by Tom Mayhew. Just almost into the media stand today. We're located in a very precarious position. Good to see. Uh, I'm not sure if I should really mention this, but is Brenda here? She is. She Brenda is. is here, everyone. If you, do, if you know Kean well, then you'll know his now is pretty famous on TikTok. Is, sorry to uh, stray away from the football there, but the ball was played down the line by, I believe, Bonner. And uh, it was the number was it the number 10, uh, 8, Samir Korthis, who just put pressure on. Sorry, it was the number 10, Marcus Diangano, who put Henry under pressure and forced him to knock it out for a throw in on this right hand side to be taken by Christian Campbell. And of course, customary with the Chip and Town Metal Hub broadcast, we will be providing you with the quiz question at half time. Junaid Mead picks the ball up and sends it all the way back towards Reese Charles Cook. Is that the quiz question that you message me usually on a Friday night with and I just refuse to answer? Uh, I believe so, this time. <laughs> uh, as Mead picks the ball up, he's going to look to drive at Santos, but instead he goes all the way back towards Corey Roberts who now feeds in Corthus. Corthus might look for a long diagonal ball. He does looking for the run of Jack Jeb, and Jeb, I thought he might have just got a touch on that. Played the ball through really nicely, did Corthus, and Jeb couldn't quite get onto it. It was a little bit high for the Dartford defensive midfielder, and Henry has another goal kick. Jack Jeb might be familiar to the Dartford defender. It was Roberts. Laid across to Gord's Campbell, I believe. No, it wasn't Campbell. I'm not sure who it was. I think it was Duradarje. Bonner now, who's come out in towards the left-back position. Corthus is being put under pressure by Russ, and he's gone back in towards Bonner. Bonner now sends this ball long. That's the theme of his play, certainly. And Tom Bonner will want to forget this fixture, I believe, uh, back in November, as he gave away the free kick that led Chippenham to score their second. It was Ricky Aguiar who bent the ball around the wall. And here is free kick specialist Jack Jeb, lays it off now towards Campbell. Campbell's going to turn inside really nicely and just playing it calmly back in towards Duradaje. Durajaje overhits the ball a little bit and it might just fall towards Santos who takes a nice touch but it's well intercepted by Corvus and Dan Roberts might be through one-on-one -on -one now Dan Roberts well blocked though by Will Richards really well back Roberts just seemed to hesitate just needed to take a firm first touch and he would have been one-on-one -on -one there with Will Henry Kieran Parcel protesting with the linesman on this near side asking if Dan Roberts was offside I wasn't too sure but Roberts wasn't clinical enough but it was firm defending by Will Richards just got there with a vital interception to send the ball back to Henry Kieran what do you make of that? Well, I think he was just on side, very mainly marginally by feet. But, you know, it's the first big chance of the game. And to be fair, Will Henry done very well, stood his ground, narrowed the angle down at a goal and has managed to make a very decent save down, a decent block as well by, uh, what is it, Spencer Hamilton, I think. As Dabre picks the ball up on this left-hand side, Mayhew did really well to intercept, so Dabre's still coming. He's got two Dartford players on him, though. He's going to run it towards the byline. Dabre plays a looking ball over the far post. Santos! It's off the post, I think! Oh, the woodwork has been struck for the first time in this game. I think it was maybe Joe Hanks who got involved there as well. That's his second chance of the game. I think it's hit Joe Hanks on the line, potentially. Big chance for Chippenham. Santos nearly gets his sixth goal of the league season. And there's a Dartford player that's gone down as well, holding his head. But Dabry did really well there to just get the ball to the byline. He chipped the ball in towards the far post. Santos, I can't remember if he took a touch or just volleyed the ball. And it was potentially going towards that left hand, or to that right hand side of Reese Charles Cook's goal. And I think Joe Hanks has potentially just stopped Chippenham Town from going a goal up. It's all about the Bluebirds. Uh, I think Dan sent a message saying he didn't want Chippenham to go up as he wanted to visit Harden Newish Park for next season. So, I mean, if Chippenham do go up, we won't be visiting Taunton. But Jack Jeb is going to look to put a dent in Chippenham's promotion chances now with a free kick just on halfway. Bonner has gone up. Jeb plays the ball long, looking towards Roberts as a firm challenge by Richards. Jeers from the Dolphin fans as they think it should be a free kick, but no objections for the players on the pitch. Hamilton now has the ball in his right back position, plays the ball down the line, but Mead takes a heavy touch and then just launches the ball forward of his own, looking for Dean Garner. Nice header though by Richards. He's played in some big Chippenham Town matches, but perhaps this could be his biggest. And Santos lays the ball in towards Young, who's coming deep now. Young has to play the ball towards Parcel, but Dean Garner's putting him under pressure. Greenslade's going to have to get to this overrun ball, but he's just got there ahead of Kalala and played the ball out now towards Richards. Dartford applying some pressure of their own now. As the ball's forwards by Richards, looking towards Santos, who's just going to let the ball run. Santos is having his shirt pulled all over the place there, but the referee or linesman on that far side is not interested in giving it. Reverse ball is played and picked up by Hanks now. Dartford can't keep the ball. Here comes Mo Dabre. Mo Dabre still driving. Mo Dabre still going. He's just took a touch too many though, and Bonner hacks the ball clear. 
Parcel knocks the ball forward. The referee pulls back for a free kick against Mo Dabre, I think, on Tom Bonner after that clearance. Dabre did really well just to keep the ball, but perhaps took a touch too many. And Tom Bonner used all of his nails to get there. That's a nice little flick by Carruthers. But Carruthers then loses the ball out towards Dabre, and Hanks just can't quite feed Dabre through. And the ball is back at the feet with Corey Roberts. It's almost end to end so far. Almost just almost end to end in the Dartford half as neither side wants to keep the ball. But that's really been a feature of Chippenham's Town matches so far. They forced, or certainly under Gary Horgan, they forced Ebbsfleet, they forced Oxford, and they forced Hamilton and Waterlooville into errors, and they'll be looking to force the Darts into errors now. And they already are quite successfully, to be fair. You know, Jordan Young, I think he's maybe a, suffering a bit of a lack of, you know, deliveries into him, but a lot of a lot of uh, issues at the back. But it's Kalala drives forward. Hello. Kalala's still going. He's picked the ball up after a ball from Jeb. Kalala's going to drive towards that line. He goes down after a challenge from Greenslade. He went down. I don't think it was half-hearted appeals from the Dartford fans behind the goal. Greenslade knew he's done nothing wrong. And the ball rolls out for a Will Henry goal kick. So, yeah, so far, Jordan Young is... Chippenham's top goal scorer in the league. Very frustrated with how Dartford are playing so far. As Parcel just sends a header out in towards the Gary Hogan technical area. I think Hogan does take a nice touch, actually. But yeah, Dan Roberts, he did very well in the match here, I thought. Created the second goal, I believe, and I think also the first goal for the Darts, where they came back from a goal down to eventually draw 3-3, thanks to Luke Russ's header in the 92nd minute. But Dan Roberts not doing too well so far as we take over to 30 minutes, and Dartford are going to have yet another throw in in this match. Ball thrown in, looking towards the head of Dabre, but it's flicked on there by Kalala, and then one by Dean Garner. Kalala still going, hacked away though, e elegantly by Parcel almost, as the ball's header by Roberts, as that's a firm header by Young. Mayhew lifts it over, looking back in towards Young, who takes a nice couple of touches, and he's flicked it through towards Hanks. Hanks is going to take a nice touch. Hanks still going for Chippenham Town, looks to bend one, but he didn't quite have enough venom on it. I think he perhaps took a touch too many again, and Darfur plays were getting back in there, drove, so he had to snatch at the effort, and it was straight to Reese Charles Cook. That's the third real, four, fourth real big chance for Chippenham that has tested the goalkeeper today. Stop showing me, stop showing me, and here goes Roberts. Carruthers now with a reverse flick ball in towards Bonner. I just realised that it seems that every other non-league or National League South manager is here tonight, bar the Concord one who's on holiday. I see the Dulwich guys behind us, Hacken from Maidstone, somewhere here. Jerry Gills, that's the name, isn't it? He's travelled away from bloody Bath to be here tonight. He was also in Oxford last night. I'm not really sure why. Harry Kane scored the second as well, by the way, just so you know, Jamie. Ball in right. there by Carothers, looking for Dan yeah. Roberts at the far post, but Roberts couldn't quite get there. And Will Henry gets there instead. Yeah, I mean, we've seen a number of managers, it's really a who's who of National League South management so far today. Obviously, Kieran Moore getting involved with some of the coaching for Concord Rangers when he can. <laughs> and Will Henry just about gets there and sends the ball out towards Will Richards. Will Henry's actually celebrated getting his UEFA B licence today mm. as well, which I saw on Twitter early on today. So congratulations to him, but I'm sure his mind will be set on this match instead of his coaching advancements. Roberts back in towards Jeb now. He goes back in towards Mead. He won't be happy with the Arsenal score at the moment. As I just try and shoehorn it, my disappointment anymore. Here goes Jeb <laughs> out towards Roberts. Here's Carruthers. Are you just Carruthers still you're driving forward? Not you know, mate, that what you're doing? Absolutely, Kieran. <laughs> Jeb now plays the ball forward, looking for the run of Kalala, but he's well blocked off there by Greenslade, and the ball is well over here. A mistake is going to be what's going to lead a goal. Dart looking very shaky in the middle of the park and defensively. Chippenham, a couple of sloppy passes. It's a mistake, in my gut feeling, is what's going to lead us to a goal here. And who knows who's going to make it in a minute. Looking more likely Dartford. Chippenham should be very pleased about a first. On Hamilton's uh, boots. I'm not sure if they're orange. I'm not sure if they're pink. Over this side, they look more orange. But he, they certainly didn't help him in that occasion as he's knocked the ball out for a free kick and Janaid Mead's going to have one. I'm going to say Tuning that. in from Bristol, come on you Bluebirds, I'm sure much of the West Country are going to be listening into this match tonight. The West Country have done very well in football this year and Chippenham at the heart of it, overachieving and making the playoffs. So Mead Mead's going to be put under pressure by Alfie Santos. Tom Bonner gets his first action in this second half and gives the ball nicely out towards Roberts. He gives it back out towards Jeb, who goes back in towards Roberts, who takes a number of nice touches. I do think that I do think that Chipman are going to have a bit more. Uh... As Corth has actually picked a ball up on this left hand side, he's going to deliver a ball in towards that far post. As Dan Roberts tries to get ahead in there, but Will Henry was nicely using his legs just to get there nicely. As Bonner just has to head that ball down, but it was a nice ball dug up by Corthus from the far post, but Henry was just equal to it. Corthus picks the ball up again. Darford coming forward again. 
This is nice work, nice work by Corden. It's out now towards Roberts. He's going to have Campbell overlapping if he finds him. Instead, he finds Kalala. It's back out now with Campbell. Sorry, no, Roberts. And it's flicked through nicely, and Jack Jebb's picked it up. Richards tries to step out. And now here's Corthers again. Corthers just toying with chipping him at the moment. Jack Jebb's going to think about chipping a ball in towards that box. The number 10, Dean Garner's there, but he's being put under pressure. Lovely there by Will Richards, and Will Richards is going to bring chipping him forward. Three goals this season for Will Richards. He's going to send the ball down the line, looking forward to Joe Hanks now, the number 13. And that's good pressure by Durajay. Durajay's just going to look to shepherd it out, and Joe Hanks potentially just stopped it from going out. And Joe Hanks then forces okay. Durajay into an error, and Joe Hanks picks the ball up, goes to the ground. I think Chippenham think that's a free kick. I'm not too sure if that's a free kick myself. Steve King definitely doesn't think that's a free kick as he's shouting. They're like a salmon colour. It's certainly a salmon colour. Steve King is going to berate the referee, but the referee's going to side in favour of the darts. I think that was probably the correct decision. Uh, Mayhew just flucked the ball in towards Santos, who took a nice touch and reacted quickly. Had that shot, and Charles Cook got low and down to his left hand side to save for the darts. Still nil nil. That's a difficult save. It's, I think Tom Bonner's on Santos there, and you know, uh, Cook would have seen that late. Great save from him. But I've said, I was saying a minute ago before Darfur went forward a, a couple of minutes ago, Chippenham going to have a bit of success, I think, trying to exploit the pace of Corey Roberts and Tom Bonner. Not very fast in the raft. I mean, you've got like, someone like Jordan Young, who's well, he's going to outpace him, definitely. Um, certainly someone to look and exploit, and definitely down this right hand side to us. Dan Roberts, and uh, I don't know who the right back is for Dolph tonight, this uh, Jure uh, gentleman. Um, oh, is it Mead? Oh, there you go, there you go. See how I, see where I, I focus. You know, their, their communication's poor. King is, I've said a million times, getting very frustrated with Dan Roberts. A lot of success coming down this side, especially through uh, Hamilton in his salmon pink boots. Bonner sends the ball forward now, that's at the feet of Dirigé, oh sorry, uh, not Dirigé, Dean Garner. And picks it out now towards Corthus. Here's Jeb, who's got time. It seems to be a midfield two for Dartford with Jeb and Corthus. Jeb does lay it out towards Sammy Corthus now. Or Carruthers. I do apologise. It's a sat this left hand side now. Can't see too well, but Jeb's just flicked it around the corner. And here's Carruthers. Plays the ball now. Dartford are in behind Chippenham Town here. Dean Garner goes for the shot, but I think it's just tipped behind brilliantly by Will Henry. The ball was there for Dean Garner to have a shot. It was on that left hand side. He's dug the ball out with his left foot. I'm not too sure whether that was just going to go into that posted stamp at the top near post or it was going to go wide. But Will Henry got a touch on it to flick it over. So Dartford going to have a corner. Biggest chance for the darts in this second half. Kean. Great save from Will Henry. It's, a first, like I said, it's not this half, the first real chance Darvin have had. And Henry has had a pretty quiet first, well, 55 minutes or so here at Prince's Park. He's been pulled into action there. And I think that's going in. So that could be a game changer. Corner comes in from Jeb into towards that box. Bonner tries to rise, but it's a chip in him head that gets it clear. Here goes me. He's going to be put under pressure by a combination of Mayhew and Young. Mayhew just about gets there. Is he being fouled there by Dan Roberts? And Chippen and Town come forward. Santos is on their right hand side. And Jordan Young picks Alfie Santos out. Santos has got time to take a touch. He's got Bonner with him now. But Santos goes for a strike. But it's straight down the middle of the goal where Charles Cook was situated. And Darfur are going to come forward now. End to end stuff in the first 10 minutes of this second half. Corthus being put under pressure by Mayhew. Mayhew goes down. He's still Corthus with it. Plays it out towards Jeb, and that was a big chance. It was Jordan Young chipping him overload on the left hand side. Bonner was absolutely nowhere in no man's land, and Santos just picked out a run from that right hand side. But I think he took perhaps again a touch too many, and Bonner was on him in a flash and forced Santos into a mistake where he put it straight at Charles Cook. And another chip and chance goes a begging. Carruthers now on this left hand side towards Dan Roberts. Hamilton thinks about making a cynical foul as I can't really see what's happening. The ball is still going forward on that left hand side. It's going to be a free kick in the corner as a Chippenham player boots the ball out of the stadium. I'm not too sure what for, but it's going to be, I think, a free kick or a throw in on this left hand side. I'm just going to stand to elevate my position to see what's going on. As I think it is going to be a free kick. Matt Cooper is going over to speak with the assistant. He doesn't believe it's a free kick. And I can't see it. And he should be pleased that uh, Chippen managed to get out of the way. Charles Cook has managed to put into a couple of saves. Sorry for the foul language of Steve King, if you can hear that as well. But this is a really open game now, and Chippen have got the free kick here. Mayhew just does send this ball forward and long pass. I was going to look to rise with that header, but it's headed there well by Roberts and Kalala. And bring it out on this right hand side. He's going to be put under pressure by Dabre. Dabre just shrugs him off. And Lala's still going to be, keep going. Dabre does eventually potentially win that ball. No, he doesn't. And the ball's out with Carruthers now. Carruthers driving forward into Chippenham territory. It's on this left-hand side with Dan Roberts now. 
Dan Roberts still going with the ball. He's going to look to drive towards the byline. Potentially, he's in behind here. Dan Roberts lays it off, but it's out towards the left foot of Jack Jeb. Jack Jeb, he had to hit that first time. He had Chibber and players all behind him. And it was just laid off, and he spooned it over Will Henry's bar. A big chance for Dartford. He had to hit that first time. And again, he spooned it over the bar, but it was good work by Roberts. His first real proper significant involvement in this match, where he's drifted past a couple of Chippenham players, put it on a plate for Jeb, and Jeb's just fired over. Oh, no, I was just saying he's not another Arsenal guy. Ball forward, nice chest by Mayhew to pick it up. He's laid it off towards Hamilton. Hamilton, is he going to play reverse ball? Yes, he does, but Jeb intercepts. Roberts now plays it. Good challenge. Right, Interception Jamie. though by Mayhew. Mayhew still coming forward for Chippenham South. Oh, He's played in Jordan on. Young. Jordan Young still got it. He's got half the players all around him. He goes to ground. Jordan Young wants a penalty kick, but the referee's not going to give it. Alfie Santos picks it up on the edge of the box now. He's turned down Roberts inside out. Santos still going to go. Santos then delivers it low and hard and Bonner clears it away. Chippenham Town up in the ante. Becca College, the big 250 listeners, has been hit. All credit goes to you boys. All credit goes to these football players on the pitch. There's 10 minutes remain. Oh wow. Oh wow, wow, well, wow. Well. Chippenham Town corner. It's to be taken by Jordan Young, who had a good opportunity, just couldn't pull the trigger in time. It's going to be an in swinging corner from this right hand side. A one arm signal, the right arm of Jordan Young goes up. All the Chippenham defenders are up in the box. Young plays his corner kick in towards that box, it's flicked on, it's bounced all over the place. Chippenham wants a penalty. I'm not sure what for, the referee's again not interested. I think it was either handball or I think Kane Bradbury was down on the floor. The referee's not giving it. He drive Chippenham Town now by with Kane Bradbury, but it was well challenged by Dartford. And the darts can now come forward. Good challenge though, Chippenham keeping the ball. Here goes Greenslade. Well, Greenslade driving forward. Out towards Bradbury, well, flicks up towards Greenslade. Greenslade across oh, towards Jordan Young, but Mead clears it quickly. Hey. Steve King thinks there was an offside. I don't think there's any hint of that. Here goes Santos. He's got down Robert Santos, goes for a left foot, he's shot, oh. he's off the bar! Spence oh. Albert and puts it wide! My God! The biggest shot of the match here at Princess Park! And it falls the way of the right back, Spencer Hamilton. Santos just picked the ball up. It's been 50-50s all over the shop so far. Santos picked it up. It was one of those speculative efforts. We know he is so much known for. And he smashed it off of Charles Cook's bar. It's fallen to Hamilton on the edge of the box. Cook is still on the floor. And Hamilton's just spooned it wide. Eight minutes to go in this match. The biggest chance so far has fallen the way of Chippenham Town just a moment ago. Dartford nil, Chippenham nil. Wow. Darford are coming forward now. Is that a foul by Mayhew? The referee's again not interested. I think Mayhew did really well just to poke the ball from the feet of Kalala. And now Chippenham come forward again. Here goes Greenslate, end to end stuff, Kian. We are in for a well, very, very good last 10 minutes. What a strike that was by Santos. I thought he was destined for the top corner. How Hamilton has missed on the re. He had the goal destined, an open goal, and he's managed to put it wide. Lots of balance. Let us know the Chippenham fans go right as well. He's, on, not, he's not scored for Chippenham Town yet, so that would have been a great way to score his first goal, but he's not done it. Santos has got Bonner all over him, but referee again not interested. Young picks it up following the head of Bonner. Here's Mayhew. Mayhew just looks towards to go home. Now he sends it long looking for Santos, who's just the ball down well. He's got Mead behind him, but he flicks it on nice for Young, who just falters in towards the chip and half key and claps that pass from Jordan Young. Greenslade bites in towards fire. Mayhew. I think we've converted the Concord Media manager into a bluebird for this evening. Here goes Jordan Young. Jordan Young concedes a throw in, actually. The, the linesman, and Steve King calling the linesman on this near side. The linesman seems to be uh, in agreement that this should be a chip and time throw, but the referees overruled him and given a free kick the way of the darts. Thank you very much for the nice messages. Number of Ebbsfleet fans I can see in the chat, Stephen BTW. No Dabre still with it. He goes back now towards Greenslade. Chippenham kicking from left to right again in this first half of extra time. Still nil nil. 91 minutes played. We are in extra time, everybody. First Chippenham Town match to go to extra time for quite a few number of years now. Ball sent forward now. Knocked off the back of Santos. And it's bouncing around. Here's the number 16, Luke Allen. He looks for a reverse ball, but it's only as far as Parcell, who takes a nice touch and is going to bring the Chippenham defence forward. He lays it off now towards Greenslade on this left-hand side. Thank you very much as well. I've just seen a message come through from Havant and Waterlooville, Matt Drabble. Uh, he's their commentator that we saw on Sunday, or Saturday rather. But Jordan Young's going to go forward. Sorry about that, Matt. Here comes Alfie Santos now. He's laid it off towards Jordan Young, but Bonner's in there well to just get ahead of the Chippenham number nine and take the ball away. Ball's played forward. It's clipped away now. 
here comes Junaid Mead running forward for the dart. He's played it out towards Lala on this left-hand side. He's going to look to drive Kalala. Kalala still going. He's got it on his right foot. Kalala goes for a strike! A whisker wide of Will Henry's post. Kalala did so well, drove in and out the left, twisted, turned inside of Hamilton and Richards. There's nothing really the defensive duo could have done to stop Kalala. And he's just hit a strike that is arrowed wide of Will Henry's post. Will Henry, he's had to make a really strong save against uh, Kalala, oh sorry, Yanni Leonard in this first, in this six minutes left of this first half of added oh, uh, extra time. I'm sure, I don't think there'll be any added time to the extra time. As the ball sent forward now, looking for Campbell, as Hamilton just has to put a poke off on it and it's gone back into the stand and Dartford are going to have themselves another corner kick. 375 in the mix, I'll chat every time I look over. And we're going over. I think I spoke to the head of um, head of Dartford here. Media uh, earlier on, and he said they get they, their record's been around 600, so we're creeping up in what is our first season of mix on our broadcast. Jack Jeb delivers this corner kick in. It's onto the head of Bonner. In fact, no, his counterpart Richards gets the ball away. Mayhew looks to head it on. Jordan Young's getting pulled. Was he the last man? The referee's not interested in giving a free kick. He points at Jordan Young, saying he went down a bit too easily. I think I might have to agree with Mr. Walchester there. Jordan perhaps went down a bit too easily. Ball played down the line now looking towards Young. Young taking a number of touches. Young looks to go through the legs of Duradarje but Duradarje still coming forward now and here goes the number 16 Luke Allen. Darford coming forward in their droves. They're looking to play the ball for him. Challenged though by Spencer Hamilton to knock the ball out. It's the third successive Darford corner. Darford coming forward now. They seem to have the measure of Chippenham in the wings but in terms of getting in behind, but Hamilton just managed to hook the ball that time. And Darford, and in particular Jack Jeb, is going to be taking what I believe is their seventh or eighth corner of this match. Most of them, if not all of them, have been taken down in that far corner. Just opposite to where me, Matt and Keane are sitting as the ball's delivered in towards their box. It's flicked on! Wide of goal! And Santos is going to pick the ball up in the channel now. Jordan Young is the only Chippenham player ahead, but Santos still just about has the ball. He plays the ball down the line. In towards, now Mayhew just on halfway. Mayhew's going to look to drive. He's gone through the legs there of Luke Allen and it's just at the feet of Janaid Mee, who's gone all the way back towards Reese Charles Cook. The biggest game in the Bluebirds history. You won't want to be missing this, I'm sure. And the 469 of you that are listening, I'm sure, are keenly glued to your screens with your ears at the minute. Ball sent forward now by Duradaje. Header one by Richards. Picked up again by that man Mayhew. He's going to drive him. He's got bundles of energy still, Mayhew. And here is the man with even more bundles of energy. Young, who lays it off. Young still got it. Laid off now. The ball's bouncing around all over the place. Dabre goes for a shot. It's falling at that far post. Santos, as I rise towards my seat, Santos looks to hook it back. It's Bradbury who just about got there. But it was Luke Allen who was there first for Maidstone United. Sorry, not Maidstone United. Do apologise. That'll get some groans from any Dartford fans that may or may not be listening. Uh, Dartford. Will Henry picks the ball up after a loose ball and sends it out. Now looking forward to Dabre. Dabre potentially being fouled, but Sumner Bell wins the header and is thrown down there by Christian Campbell. And the referee, after 111 minutes in this match, brandishes the first card and it goes out to Christian Campbell for a blatant foul on Mo Dabre. I mean, my belly is. You know when you get that nervous feeling? You know, like, I used to do, like, I don't know why I'm saying it, but I used to do a bit of, like, singing when I was younger. And obviously I hate getting this feeling, this is horrible. I think I you lot of feeling than the under or so if you on a goal and the 450 supporting from home because this is absolutely bloody torture. And Mayhew is actually going to be delivering this ball in now. Mayhew opts to swing that ball in towards that far post. It's bouncing around. I think that was Jordan Young who just about got there. He had to snatch it before it reached the foot of Tom Bonner. He just got that with his left foot and it spooned it well over the bar. Serbia have made the Eurovision finals. Serbia have made the Eurovision finals. And I've just remembered, I've just remembered not only headed away by Duru Darje. Kane Bradbury's going to go in for a challenge. Chippenham going forward with Luke Russ. Here's Mo Dabre with it now. Mo Dabre still going. Oh, he's driving well, the Swindon Town Loney. I'm sure if any Swindon fans are listening, you'll be wanting to keep an eye on him or an ear out for him. Here's Santos now. Santos plays a reverse ball, looking for Hamilton. Hamilton almost bundles over his Dartford counterpart there. And Chippenham Town win, or sorry, lose. And it's a goal kick, but it's cleared away quickly. Mayhew now goes for one and goes for one that fires into the back of the stand, perhaps. The final opportunity for Chippenham Town. I think Tom Mayhew has gone to ground. There's going to be a substitution, is there? 
I can't see who it's for. It's going to be a substitution. Mo Dabre is going to be making way. Noah Coppin, the man who's known for injury time winners, his one Shippen of Town goal was a 96th minute winner against Hungerford only a few weeks ago. What a time it'll be to do now, Mo Dabre. Dabre, by the way, genuinely in for a very, very good career in the Football League. He's been absolutely outstanding for the Bluebirds this evening, up and down the wing. He's caused Christian Campbell, who I think is one of the best fullbacks in the division. 600 now. Sorry to bite in there, Keen. Right. Matt came in my leg shaking next to the 600. Line. Adi Aziz wins. Oh, sorry, no. Uh, don't, oh, well, pardon me there. Jordan Greenidge wins the flick on, and Henry with a clearance that's only as far as Jack Jeb. 20 seconds left now. Jack Jeb, last chance saloon for the darts. It'll be a heartbreak for the Bluebirds if they find a 180 now. Ball played through. Is Aziz onside? Yes, says the linesman. Back in towards Jeb on the edge of the area. Five seconds remain. Reverse ball looking towards Mead. Lofted it towards the penalty area. Henry grabs his shoot, Lee. Steve King knows his curtains. It's got to be penalty kicks now. Callum Walchester, is he going to take a look at his watch? Is he going to put the lips to his mouth? One minute of added time. Greenslade ball down the line now. Coppin's going to chase. But that's a calm from Charles Cook. He comes rushing out. Not long left to go. Cook is going to send this long. This has to be perfect if Darford want anything. It's a good ball. It's bouncing around his ease. Richards gets it clear. Out towards Santos. Santos has got it in his own half. He's being put under immense pressure by Jack Jeb. Chippenham running the clock down. Free kick for Chippenham Town for a push by Jack Jeb on Alfie Santos. You have to be a bit careful there, Jack Jeb, as any yellow card foul would have been. 633. We're increasing more and more by the minute, as I think we know we're going to be going to penalties. James T22. Jamie, your commentary is fab. Thank you very much. Martin W123. Lips to your mouth. Katie Shepard, not penalties. I can't deal with this best commentary this season, guys. Thank you very much. Claire Hoggs, Gary Horgan's wife. Thank you very much for listening. Gary Horgan's, Gary Horgan's wife is I listening that, in today. Good luck for Penn Shippenham. Keep Dartford in the National League South. Shippenham Town and Dartford. 121 minutes and 20. 700. Are we going to get? A, we might not. We might get a thousand. You know. Hello. Check us out. I think. There you go, Jamie. Have it back, mate. I'm done. I'm done with cliches. One, one thing I just want to mention, Keen, is that we can see on our little mix of our software here. We can see when the audio levels clip. And after two hours and 56 minutes, you've made it for the first time. Managed to clip. So good job. Sorry to the 764 of you that have had to hear that. But one thing before the spot kicks, we know we need to be proud of the boys, but one thing I want to personally mention is thank you very much to every Chippenham Town fan <laughs> who has listened to us this season. This has been my first venture into commentary. It's been Matt's first venture into commentary. We've put so much effort in and thank you so much nice, for the nice actually. messages you've all put in. We really appreciate your support and that is also echoed. I've spoken to Gary, I've spoken to Neil at the club. They also want to pass on a massive amount of support from the club as we know there's been a large number of fans that have come to games this season, made the atmosphere what it is. And at the moment, you have you need to make yourself proud, Bluebirds fans, because you've cheered the team on. And at the moment, there's five kicks away from from almost what was seemed to be was impossible. We've just gone up 30, 30 listeners in, in one second. I can't, I can't believe what I'm saying. What I'm eagerly now waiting for is we go away from football cliches. As we're going back into the action now, which way will we be kicking? The way that me, Keen and Matt are currently sat in the media area, the Dartford fans are being be, left. I prefer it to be that end because we'll be able to see it's where it's going. Because that's where we'll be able the to see Dartford that. fans are on the right hand side of us and the Chippenham fans are on the left hand Biggest side. match currently going on in England. And it's going to be Durajaje to step up as we go into sudden death. Dartford score or Chippenham. Durajaje is going to step up. He's going to take uh, right-footed. Now, just going to be professional. Durajaje for the darts. Takes. Saved by Will Henry. Big stuff for Chippenham Town. It's going to be the man. The man who scored some incredible goals this season, Alfie Santos. Who's going to step up. Cannot contain myself. I'm sure the Bluebirds don't get ahead of yourself. It's penalties. It's a cruel way to go. But Alfie Santos... He's played for Weymouth. Weymouth were the last side to beat Dartford on penalties. Every penalty so far has been on target. 
So many saved. This is the fifth penalty that's been saved. Will Henry saved three. He's matched how many he saved in the league season. And now Alfie Santos could step up for Chippenham Town to send them through to the semi-finals of the National League South playoffs. The Brazilian's going to step up right-footed. Santos for Chippenham. Yes! Yes! I cannot believe it. The celebrations on the pitch. Yes! Chippenham Town have done it. The unthinkable unfolds. Yes! Chippenham have dumped out Epsfleet. Dumped out Darfur or other. They're facing Epsfleet on Sunday. After 121 minutes, it's such a cruel way to go. No goals. But Will Henry's the hero of the spot kicks. I feel so bad for Dartford. They were good. It was an even match. There's so many celebrations on the pitch. Chip and I'm going to celebrate with our fans. Again, I was emotional after the haven't match. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. All credit to Dartford. They've done so well. Fourth in the league. They deserve to be in third position. They've had some remarkable results. But the cruelness of penalties, it's the Russian roulette. And it's dumped the darts out. Chippenham have made the journey to Kent. And they've dumped Dartford out. So full time at Princess Park. After extra time, it's finished Dartford nil, Chippenham nil. But on penalties, it's finished Dartford three, Chippenham two. No, sorry, I can't muddle myself. Dartford two, Chippenham three. Key and Ward, your assessment. <laughs> Jamie, Matt, congratulations. Everyone back in Wiltshire, around the world. Wow, what an afternoon of football. And uh, Matt and Jamie have a hug next to us. Chippenham are off to Ebsleet on Sunday afternoon. Wow. And let me tell you... <laughs> You good? <laughs> wow, what an evening of football. There's a Chippenham fans to our left going mental. The 150 or so who have travelled with here this evening. Fair play to them as Dartford will face another season in the National League South. And Jamie's sat here next to me holding back the tears. What a night for Chippenham Town Football Club. And for those of you who heard Steve King have a bit of a bite at myself and Jamie and the comments he made... Uh, only apologies for that one. Uh, I do thoroughly apologise for the actions of the Darford manager this evening. But what a night. Matt, how are you feeling, mate? <laughs> relieved. <laughs> very, very relieved. Unbelievable penalty shooter that is. You can just see down by the away end, the, ch the Chipman players and the fans are both celebrated and fair, p fair play to them is absolutely deserved. What a shootout that was. Jamie is in absolute tears right now. <laughs> um, <coughs> but full credit, full credit to Darfur. You know, they've done absolutely well this season. And to play a whole 120 minutes of football and extra time and penalties, got to give full credit to Steve and the, and the, and the team. And I, I hope to see them next season do well. Darfur, they finished fourth. You might be able to hear the celebrations over my voice and Jibbelham celebrating down in the far end. You know what this means to them. You know what it means to them after long, grueling 40 games where there's been so much uncertainty. It was throughout the season, it's been ups, it's been downs. We've been in the promotion hunt for a lot of the season. We've been in the playoff, we've been in the relegation zone at points, I feel, or down the bottom, certainly. And the side, the Minnows, the side that were not expected to be anywhere near this level, they were not expected to challenge, I think. Speaking to the managers and coaching staff at the start of the season, what was expected was top 10, what was hoped for was top 10. I don't think the playoffs were ever even dreamed of. Not only were the playoffs achieved in dramatic circumstances, but the playoffs have been progressed through in dramatic circumstances. And wow, 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 wow. Matt, can we quickly see the chat? I want to see if anyone, yes. what messages we've got sent through. Why did the Dartford manager say to the court, we'll address, we'll address all this in time. Pure unity and togetherness from the squad. The passion is evident to wear the shirt with passion and pride. Passion.